and there's our ascending node. So that about there is where we want to plan a an incli another inclination correction. And then when they flip is where it should be. All right, close enough. I don't know why I quick save after making a maneuver node because they don't save. Although I believe there is a an add-on like the Kerbal Alarm Clock that I don't currently have that actually makes it so that the maneuver node saves when you quick save, but that might be something to think about for future recording sessions. All right, it's not letting us time warp as much as I wish it would. All right, cutting back in, and we are about to make the one second burn that will correct our inclination. Even though we only have a sliver of fuel left, this should be still plenty to get us into a proper docking position. And there we go. Good enough. And we still have a sliver of fuel left, so yeah, as I said, I don't think we should be running out or worried about such things as happening. And even if I do run out of fuel, I can use the RCS thrusters because they, they don't they aren't nearly as powerful, but they can make minor corrections for a docking. We are hovering very close to the atmosphere here, so I hope I don't accidentally aero brake. If so, I just don't have the fuel to boost myself out. That would be pretty much catastrophic, but I still think we're high enough. <clears throat> Four-thirds pi r cubed. So now pretty much all we have to do is wait, because... Let's see, where is the command module? Oh, it's right there, so... Over time, since we're in a lower orbit, it should catch up. So it might take a few orbits, but... Certainly it's not long enough for our Kerbals to run out of air. Okay, that is weird. I just noticed that my previous command module that didn't work so well, and then the command module I'm using right now, are actually going in different directions around Duna. Hey, I never really noticed the new Kerbal expressions, but it's interesting how they... Occasionally they'll sort of talk amongst themselves. Of course he can't hear them, but it looks like they're talking, and then... Now, I think when we crossed over to the light side of the planet, I'm not sure if there's any correlation here, but they now they're all looking around as if they're looking at the planet, or out the windows at space, or at the sun, or... We are very close by now. Okay, please render. We are very close by to our... Duna Dropper 2 Probe, which is the command module. And apparently I have suffered the glitch again where the numbers disappeared from the altimeter. And I'm not sure why this was the case, but I noticed in post-production of the last episode that the numbers disappeared as I came in for a landing. I'm not exactly sure why that happens, but it may be a glitch with the Dynamic Warp mod. Now that we are in space, let's just to be extra sure and to be realistic. Where's the solar panel? I want to extend it one last time before we ditch the landing capsule here. Except then again, I don't think we can ditch, just ditch the landing capsule because it has all the parachutes and crap that we need to re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere, so never mind what I just said. Crap. I don't know why this isn't working. My RCS is not on. And this is not good at all. Okay, this time I have it right. Yes, got it. And there we go. So yeah, this will act as a space tug because I don't have the equipment on the command module to do a re-entry re and landing because I forgot that I needed the lander for that.
because that was the original plan. So what I'm going to do is save, and then we're going to take another break, and this will probably be an episode break. I'm not sure how I'll split it up, but... Okay, that was what was wrong the whole time. I had dynamic warm on two... Dynamic warp, not warm, warp on two times the whole time, and I didn't realize I'd left it up. I thought it was on one times. So yeah, that explains why maybe I was having some troubles with the docking, because the game was running f at two times speed, and I didn't even realize it. So I have my maneuver node here. I'm very close to an intercept with Kerbin, but I'm going to worry about it when I'm in solar orbit, actually getting the encounter, because I would like to get this done first and just get out of Duna orbit. Okay, am I still in time warp? I should not be. Now I need to control from whatever it takes to get on the mark. Okay, now I can extend the solar panel. If I can find it again, it always seems to be in the dark. Alright, I find it very concerning that I'm not seeing a closest approach. So I'm gonna burn a bit more and hope that one shows up. Okay, there we go. Good. Yeah, so there's my target position, and then there's where I'm going to be. So now I just need to make some course corrections that'll put me on the right path. And I still have a lot of fuel, surprisingly. I had more than enough and I didn't even realize it. I could have done some pretty radical stuff that would have made things a lot easier if I had wanted to. But right now all I gotta do is maybe add a maneuver here that will create an encounter and then take us home. Headed away from Duna right now. Yeah, I don't really care to watch it in a proper speed. And we are just about to leave the sphere of influence. Okay, now we are back in solar orbit. Wait a second, which way are we going? We're going that way. I thought we were going the other way. I don't know what I was thinking. And now we can go. kind of a weird angle to be burning at, but it's what does the trick. Alright, now we have the encounter. Now the only thing left to do is make it so that it hits the atmosphere. Maybe I could do that down here. I don't know why it's insisting that I do it on the purple orbit, which is actually after the encounter, which is not useful to me. 
This is another thing that I wish they would fix up. All right, that should do it. Finally, I got this. Now, if everything goes well, I should just be able to drift along this trajectory and re-enter the atmosphere. So I'll stay connected to the command module for now, but as we re-enter, it might be a good idea to disconnect it just to make sure that nothing gets torn apart and also so that the parachutes can disconnect properly. What I'll also want to do is maybe refuel the lander just in case, but then again it would make it heavier, so maybe not. Maybe I'll give it just a little bit of fuel, just in case something needs happening, I don't know. Maybe not. Well, for now, we're getting very close back in, so the planet should be nearby. I wonder if I can see it. It's not really that easy to find in the view here. However, it should be near where the sun is, about. Yeah, I'll get back in a bit closer and see if I can find it. Oh, it's way up there. That's why I wasn't finding it near the sun. Yeah, now it's pretty much just going to fall back in. Yep, so Kerbin is visible up there. You might not be able to see it so easily on the video, but... We're basically just falling back in. And we should be able to arrow break. It, it is a bit of an awkward angle to re-enter, so hopefully things won't get too hot. Okay, here comes the blue marble. Let's not overshoot. Let's have a save right here, and maybe this is a good time to disconnect the command module. So if I can do that... Actually, you know what? For a better show, what I'm going to do is leave it connected as it re-enters, and then at the very last minute before I start deploying parachutes, I will, I will disconnect the command module and let it blow away. I know this, this is dangerous, but... I have quick save, so I might as well do it anyway. Okay, slow down, slow down, slow down. That was pretty anticlimactic. Okay, get oriented correctly. No, go up. This way, this way, this way. Oh crap. Oh crap. This isn't good. Okay, disconnect, please. Undock. No! Wrong one. Deploy parachutes. Crap, are the parachutes deploying? Do I even have control? Oh, shh. Okay, we're in trouble here. Deploy all of the chutes. Okay, I think we're safe. There goes the command module. I didn't really see all of the explosions, but still pretty crazy. I think this is the first time I've actually seen trees as well. Normally I seem to land in places where there aren't trees, but I'm sure they aren't even solid. So yeah, at this point, what's my... Here, I'll speed up the dynamic warp just a little bit so that we can come in a bit faster. There go more bits. Is there any more debris coming down? I don't think so. I can't really orientate myself, so let's hope for a smooth landing and touchdown. 
All right, well, that's a bit of an awkward landing, but we did it. Maybe I can put myself right side up? Nope. Yeah, I don't even have any fuel. So yeah, why don't we have somebody get out and get back in? I don't know why I did that, but that pretty much concludes this mission. So yeah, we'll see you guys next time. I'm so thankful I got this done with. Next time we're going to do something non-interplanetary because that was too much to take on. I'll probably go back to doing, making rovers and stuff and maybe sending them, maybe I can send a rover to EVE or something. I might do like a curiosity style mission to Duna again. Maybe something that can travel long distances and mine Keithane to prepare for future missions. And then at some point we can start thinking about heading towards Jewel and even Moho. So yeah, that's things to look forward to, which we will do in the next coming video.